Hey, everybody. Uh, hi, and welcome to episode three of the Mondo Happy Hour. Um, it is Friday, May 29th, and uh, thanks for thanks for hanging out and thanks for spending a little bit of time with us. Um, we weren't sure if we were going to want to come on. It feels a little weird. Times are very, very much strange and confusing and uh, scary at the moment, but um, yeah, you know, we wanted to come on and we wanted to hang out with uh, each other, with you guys, and just uh, try and forget about things or at least uh, put them on the back burner for for a little bit. So thank you if you're tuning in, um, and uh, I hope everybody is doing doing okay, staying safe, staying healthy, and uh, yeah. So thanks. Um, this one is going to be a little different. The past couple episodes we've done, we've kind of had uh, more folks from the Mondo crew. Um, on the stream, but tonight it's just going to be kind of more of a poster focus. Um, so we have myself, I am Eric, uh, and we also have Mitch and Rob uh, here with me. So what's up, dudes? How are you guys doing? Okay. I got another yeah. COVID uh, eBay purchase coming. Oh, oh yeah, show this, Rob. It's so Rob. This is the most Rob, Eric. <laughs> this is Rob in physical. No. This is Robin Nick. I can only point form. to it. No, go get it. You can't see it. Go get it. Rob's showing a lot of good leg here. I'm, I'm liking the, the amount of leg we're getting on the screen. Yeah, usually <laughs> you don't see him in shorts at all. Okay, yes. Look at this thing. A, bring it closer. What is a pink rooster. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> I've been getting modeling. I thought about my grandmother. She used to collect wall pockets. What, what is a wall pocket? It is a pocket. You would hang on your wall and what then you, get in trouble when you broke it by accident and got to hear about how mean, rare it can was. You, can you show this and explain what's a pocket about it? You can oh. put things in here, knickknacks, flowers, yarn, and then you can mount it to the wall or display it by itself. Look at that. Multi-purpose. <laughs> Can't wait till Mondo starts getting into wall pockets. <laughs> <laughs> You're... A week away from pitching that. I I've never, never Eric. Have you ever heard the word wall pocket in your life? The words. No. Nope. Nope. Who do we have here in the chat? Oh, we got Will Rang. What's up, man? How's it going? We got Tim. We Tim got in the chat. Oliver. We got lots of folks. Thank you so much, man. That's super nice of you to say, Chris. Appreciate that. Uh, we'll let a couple people trick win. Um, Mitch, how are you doing, man? You're not going out to the guest. Uh, well, yeah, I'm, yeah, sure. I mean, we'll let it, we'll we'll touch base, Mitch. How are you doing, man? I'm okay. Mm -hmm. If everyone here doesn't know, I live in Minnesota. I live in the Twin Cities, so it's a little stressful. Um, I've been pretty glued to the live feeds and seeing what's going on, but that's pretty much the best way to describe it. Is just overall stress about it. I'm I'm far enough removed where I'm not, you know in the mix or anything but it's still just feeling for the entire community uh, it's not good yeah it's crazy man um it's crazy seeing wes crazy. in the freaking feed. oh come on come on <laughs> <laughs> we'll jump right in hang on we'll, we'll get into it so uh we had mentioned that we had a special guest join us we'll we'll have him uh join here right now uh everybody say hi to our friend jason edmiston What's hey, up, Jason? Hey, guys. Let me hear the high okay, quality of the internet. That's it. Uh, let's just go, let, yeah, let's just go ahead and put this out front. Jason has slow internet, so we'll help him through this. <laughs> let us know guys. how it's working out. And uh, styling a Danko Jones shirt. I thought I said Danky Jones, which has been made in this whole fucking show but very nice. If you're yeah, unaware, Jason. You guys again. Yeah, good to see good you, to man. see you. How are you? Good. I mean, it's kind of sad. My life's different than it was before all of this went down. So, just yeah, we're we're, of, we're separated by an impenetrable barrier called the border. Now. <laughs> well, now they now they won't let me go across at all. Even if you guys open up the border, I doubt our prime minister is going to open it up anything. So, it might be a, a little while before I see you guys in the flesh again. We I assume we will. You were right. my last house guest. Yeah, yeah you were. Man. You were up against it. You were. He came in. Yeah. If you're unaware. Uh, before everything kind of shut down and, and coronavirus like really took took hold, uh, like two days before. Two days before we were planning a. Mitch gotcha called me the night before I was to fly out to 
Rob and Jenny. Says, you're not really going down there, are you? <laughs> ah, Mitch is crazy, <laughs> Daniel. She's like, what the fuck are you talking about? And the context yeah, is, yeah. is we were we were planning a Godzilla gallery show um, for, for it was going to be the first show of South by Southwest on March like 13th. Um, so Jason was coming in to, to come to the show in person, hang out. And he, he came in and we did a radio interview. And that was the last time I, I saw Rob in person. I saw Jason in person. That was the last time we really that we were out in the world, um, you know, while Jason was in town. Uh, so, yeah, and that was that was going on two and a half months ago now which is crazy man i was supposed to be in the states three times since then for shows so it's been another another two times i guess before the summer's over i mean i do a lot of traveling right now so it's kind of weird not to not to be out and about I yeah how has weird. that been just kind of you know being on you know stuck in, i guess say, say stuck know, i've been getting a lot of renovations done around the house i'm finishing my basement i gotta get a shipping area because right now i'm i'm wrapping everything on the table so I need to finish my basement and designated shipping, receiving area, whatever. Somewhere to put all the tubes and boxes. And do you feel like you're working? Sort of do you feel like you're working more or you're working less than normal? Um, more than convention season, but less than I have in, in past years, just because I'm, I'm more efficient now. And I'm, I'm, I have an assistant that helps me ship. So it takes a little bit of the prep for me. So I'm not working six days a week, which is good. Um, spending a bit more time with, with my wife. Um, but wow, I like to work, you know, that all right, all the time. It's a nice pursuit. So do you. I mean, you're always at your desk. That's only because Tanya, I hate people, Jason. <laughs> Tanya's, a, Tanya's a teacher, right, Jason? Yeah, she is. Uh, so she's been teaching at home through uh, Google uh google docs i guess she would she would make a, a lesson for the day and then it's actually instructing the parents to homeschool i don't know if mitch if that's what you're doing are you are you taking lessons from the teachers and then kind of implementing them yeah my boys are young so it's a lot of video based stuff um but yeah every day well today was actually the last day of school but um every day they'll okay. usually they'll usually get some lessons some assignments and then They'll have like a PE, a, a video to do for PE and a video to do for music and stuff like that. Um, oh. And it's been it's been pretty smooth around here because my wife used to be an elementary teacher, um, but some people have really struggled with it. I've really heard people that are completely exasperated with it. Yeah, my yeah, wife. Some of the parents are, you know, doing. They're not providing uh, proof of of that their kids are doing any work. So you kind of have you really have to shake their tree all the time. Hey, are you are you doing these things because it really is up to them to implement them. Wait, wait, Mitch, were your boys, were they able to be excited about being the last day of school? Or they're like, eh, another effing day. Yeah, they're excited because it's it's kind of a grind. Um, it's a lot of push and pull with, with Steph trying to get them to do everything and them having, you know, not wanting to. So they're just, it's not like they're like, you know, throwing their hats off and running outside, but they're definitely happy to not have to do it tomorrow. Um, but yeah, and they took a picture for the last day of school and stuff like that. But no, it's not, I mean, it's not the same, but nothing's the same. So, How are they managing that sort of, I mean, even for adults, right? Like managing that work-life balance is kind of crazy. But what's that like for, especially for young kids, trying to like separate school time and, you know, work time or, you know, or home time, separate, family time? Separate school time from your toys being right there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. Sorry, I got it's all good. Um, yeah, it, honestly, they're pretty adaptable. I mean, it, the hardest thing is starting to be that kids in the neighborhood are starting to play with each other, and we're not quite there yet. Um, so they've asked some questions about that. But, yeah, I mean, they're pretty adaptable. They don't really ask a whole lot of questions. The only time anything happens is if the TV occasionally gets left on during the news, and then it's, like, crazy, you know? Are you supposed to go back in, in August some? time then no, i mean they haven't even school. announced yet i assume what they're gonna do is say they are that's what pretty much everyone's doing um okay is saying they are and then who knows if that'll actually happen you know as as right. we as we discussed with your trip to austin it's day to day right like the day yeah. you left the day you left um Yes, this is a homeschool talk. Um, <laughs> this is a homeschool talk. The, <laughs> the day you left, it seemed completely insane that you wouldn't travel. And by the time you got back, you were like almost worried about getting back. 
So that's how fast it was happening. Yeah, I, I watched it yeah. happen real time, dude. He went like, eh. <laughs> oh, he was he was so cavalier about it, but then on the in the oh. car ride, it changed like in the span of like a half hour when I was driving you guys back to Rob's house. It was like, yeah, I kind of just want to go home like right now. <laughs> like I, I don't want to be here anymore. I I actually changed my wife's mind on that weekend too. Oh yeah, she was all about. Oh no, this, this isn't gonna. And then by the time I was leaving to come home, she's like, oh yeah, everything's canceled. I'm staying home for two months at least. So thank you, Mitch. <laughs> He's a bear of bad news. I was, I was an early adopter on the coronavirus. Were, I'll, I'll say that. I agree, Chris. That's, I we agree. All do. It sucks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, speaking of posters, you want to talk about what you got coming up with uh, us or with anyone else? Oh, anything going on? Chris also said, uh, uh, your last drop was spectacular, Jason. I saw that the the, oh, the eyes, nice man. Huge yeah, amount um, of sales. Too. Like, this number was gigantic. Yeah, uh, thank you. I've I've kind of had to shift the model a bit because I, as you know, I always do spring and summer conventions, um, Texas Friday and San Diego Comic Con, all that stuff, and they've all been canceled. So I just decided to have full releases online. Basically, whatever I would have brought to these shows, bring that online and just run it like, hey, this is exactly what I would have brought and sold them all at once. And and it's a lot for an online for me. It's, you know, thousands of, of prints. So it's been really well received. I was worried because I because everybody's out of work. So, I mean, the desire might be there, but um, people are still working. They, they can afford it or they're, you know, they're scared. So, um, I mean, I'm flattered, but I'm a little concerned that everybody's making, uh, you know, is are able still, to are you still operating though like are you still working like it's conventions might be reinstated at any time or have you altered your like production schedule no i i i've been hearing from the conventions that i'm a part of everything is canceled up to uh, new york comic-con which is october mm -hmm. i paid for that a couple weeks ago and but it might be canceled I, I suppose any day or it might go on i mean everything might turn around but it is new york in october um so it's not that far away. And I don't even know if the border is going to be open by then. So not, not, not to that, mention if they're not, not to mention physically, they'll be happening online. Not to mention so, the place so. where they have New York Comic Con is just currently being dismantled as a field <laughs> hospital. So it's yeah. It's, yeah, that's that's not too um it's not looking good. That's not too reassuring. No, no, and actually Canada's been very um, cautious about everything. I mean, we kind of had it hit the same time you guys did, and I guess our our the spread of of our population is is a bit more spread out than you guys, and our obviously our population is lower. We have it's what, a catch a one? really oh, okay. <laughs> no, we have a tenth of the population of you guys, but we only seem to have a twentieth of the infection rate, something like that. So it's I think it's because we're so spread out, um, but it's also because we're blocking everything and and even the, the, i was telling rob earlier that the conservatives and the liberals are kind of seeing eye to eye they're, they're not infighting on this which is nice they're kind of coming together there's a and is you know stay at home and opening things slowly so that's been nice um Must be it's nice. Been perfect, yeah. but it's been good it's been good uh it's been better in a lot of countries uh and you guys know ultimately you do you me um, a favor jason can you turn all the way yeah. to the side and show me your profile <laughs> Mitch suspected you were going to look like Lobot with your headphones. I want to see if that's true. <laughs> Someone can screen cap that and put it next to Mike Mitchell's Lobot portrait. I want to see how close. <laughs> Jason, I'm, I'm not sure if you can if you can speak to this, but uh, Andrew was asking if you could mention all the shows that you were planning on attending um, since most were canceled. Uh, well, Monster Palooza which is the is actually the next one that would have been affected. Um, I guess it's passed by now. Uh, Texas Fright as a part of um, Horror Hound Convention in, in Ohio was the one that was, I guess, two weeks after I was I was seeing Rob. So that was canceled just before I went home. Uh, and you got San Diego Comic-Con coming up in July. I think that's it. Uh, and then obviously New York and mm -hmm. possibly Decon in, um, in November. I don't know. I hearing mixed reports because I have my booth for that. It hasn't been canceled, but Gavin Newsom saying that no conventions are going to happen this year. I think I heard um, from my, all my friends in California, but amazing, that might just be speculation. 
you're from another country and you know the name of a governor of another country state. <laughs> See this thing. <laughs> he's, I drew he's great. that guy. I drew that guy for the cover of the Village of Old ten years ago. So I know him from that. He's a young up and coming politician. Dude, make some friends. I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a <laughs> I'm going to make a Mitch Putnam prediction right here that there aren't any conventions in 2020, but who knows? Wow. Yeah. I'm making a Rob Jones prediction that it will be sunny and also raining at some point in 2020. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not sure if you've seen the chat, but there's some folks uh, calling you out for the maniac tapes. Oh, I know. I know. (laughs) That'll probably have to be a, a post. Once, once you know, once you're able to get things shipped and all that. Ooh. Yeah, because actually, what the deal is is so. Here's some more information. Let's go into this dumb maniac tape story. But um, <laughs> I got the tapes made, and then we got the. Well, wait, gonna, who who laid out the J card for the tapes? You did, Rob. Right. And it was one. an o- it was an oversized one because it was gonna go in a, a VHS style clamshell, but a small one like for a, for a cassette. <laughs> And so we made all this. We made the the J cards, got everything printed, got the tapes made, and then I went to put them together, and the the clamshell wasn't a single plastic sleeve on the outside, so the the art couldn't go in it. It was like three separate slots for the spine, the front, and the back. So it needs to be redone at some point with with regular tape J cards and a regular tape case, um, and I you know. That, I that, can do that tomorrow. That was a big enough obstacle to kick that task six years down the road. <laughs> yeah, we need y'all to keep holding us accountable or holding Mitch accountable uh, every time we do these stream. Don't let the maniac yeah. tape die. Yeah. Would you guys ever do anything as as niche as like an eight track or something? Just oh like, my goodness! No. Are you? Does it? How many are you people pitching something? No, what do you want? Any, yeah. What do you got here? Doing, <laughs> No, no, I'm just curious. People are doing cassettes. People are, you know, VHS. The, I don't think eight track players hardly exist. I don't think eight track players hardly exist anymore. And I also don't know where you. I don't know if you can get eight track tapes made anymore. You might be able to, but the thing is, I had an eight track player. I had brand new eight tracks, like never been played for this eight track player, and I still never listened to my eight track player. So like I gotta tell you, I feel as I gotta tell you, I feel as old as the hills, and I'm too young for eight track. So yeah. Yeah, it was before my time. Dude, I am the hills, and I'm telling you, it's too old. (laughs) Let's get some laser disc out too. (laughs) Some select. It's it's possible. Some RCA. At Frightmare a couple years ago, I was uh, I was walking around and I accidentally bought a Night of the Living Dead uh, laser disc, thinking it was the vinyl soundtrack. So <laughs> <laughs> I was like super stoked. I was flipping through and I was like, oh, sweet, Night of the Living Dead soundtrack. This is awesome. What it's is perfect. it doing to my needle? Yeah, and I, I didn't play it, thankfully, but I had made the transaction. I bought it. And then by the time I got back to our booth, I was like, this is a laser disc, man. And so whoever <laughs> decided to package and make those look identical, uh, bite me. My kids only know what CDs are because of video games. I mean, you know, that's gone too. Really? Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <sighs> just, just, I'm, I feel like an old dog up on the porch, and I just want to crawl under the porch at this point. To put Rob on the spot none here. Of you guys, none of you guys use any kind of DVD media still on your computers? Because I'm assuming a lot of you yeah, we do. DVD. That's true. Uh, right. They do. They know from movies too, I guess, but they don't know the concept of playing music on a CD. Um, okay. I think Jason, I've been out. I, I think I I've been read, out of the CD games since they were born. If I want to read an old uh, CD for a compute for get an old file, it's a whole yeah. process. I have to find somebody that's got a reader at this point. Oh, well, this guy in the chat saying the this guy in the chat saying Ghost made a an eight track. That's cool. Whoa. Oh. Wait, go. There's always a niche market for the unusual stuff. Like, let's bring out some. I wouldn't mind doing some more Viewmaster reels. I I think it was a novel idea because you can have them as a display item as well as something that's playable. It's a little bit. Kind of I loved cool. it, man. That was fun. I still have mine. Machine play this. I'd love to cool. have some Viewmaster reels of the new Dune movie to match my Viewmaster reels from the old Dune movie. I think I can't believe they bothered to make. But I, I, I really wish they would still do that. If you mess reels for new movies. Oh, look at Jeff. Jeffy H is saying there's a Ghost Main Black Metal song today. I just saw that. 
<laughs> hey, Jeff. What's up, Jeff? Mr. Mr. That's Mr. my Jeff. grandmother's uh, Viewmaster reel. Hang on real quick. Uh, Rob Lavender is asking. Uh, need more Rob Jones grief, grief prints, but... I don't know if that train's still going, man. That guy's on Peter of town right now. Yeah, hey, Rob, can you get out one of those drawings to show the camera how big they are? Yeah. <laughs> I, didn't know, I didn't know how big I'll they talk, were. I'll, I'll talk in the meantime. Rob's been working on this new project, so let's give some background. In the last month, Rob has become obsessed with Hedera, Hedora, however you want to say it. Um, and all he's been drawing is different people as Hedera um, and just sinking tons of references to their life into them. And they're big. They're like 18 by 24. And they're, uh, perfect. they're amazing. They're, they're really good. So great. grief yeah. grief might be. There you go. I didn't know they were oh, that is, big. Is that, I, I one, thought they is were that, the size of that the divine one, Rob? Yeah. I think that might be the divine. Yes, it is, Mitch. So he's done divine, Richie Rich, Judy Garland. He's working on a kiss one for me now. I was telling Eric earlier. Oh, what race? Hedora. That is Hedora Divine, I just showed you. Or Divine Hedora. Yeah, so everyone great. tell Rob that these look good and that this should be his next show and that this is a good idea. And Oh, yeah. Let's, let's have a gallery show right now. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have one on the... Have on the buy one. Just go downstairs. Jason will have one with you probably. Uh, I would totally. Are you guys losing a lot of uh, restaurants in Austin? I was seeing a couple um, by, I don't know what street that is, where Bangers is. Oh, There's rainy. A couple restaurants I can see that. They got high rent. rent. Well, they're also all patio restaurants. Like, that's why um, that's why, why they attract crowds because, you know, you sit down though in the But that would be cocktails. You guys, you get, they have restaurants open in Texas. Here, they yep. did just um they're just opening for patio only here actually which is sort of an interesting way to do it but oh. yeah they're um, just okay. starting to do dining room openings um but even for the last couple of weeks and months I'd, I'd say most of the restaurants in austin have at least offered a, a curbside option um so i've been my wife and i have been trying to do that um with a lot of local businesses as often as we, a couple times a week even curbside like my joint next to me el dorado it's still packed with outdoor pickup service. Like we'll drive by, mm -hmm. like, oh, it's busy today. And it's like a full parking lot of people coming to pick up their food. Well, now there's like fairly, I've been hearing from, I think Rank was telling me there's like fairly packed bars in Austin, right? Now? I don't know. I'm going to Bruce Campbell this stuff and I don't want to know. And when I walk out there, I'll see what the world looks like <laughs> after a JB, spell. what up, JB? JB? Miss you. Hey, Justin. Everyone congratulate JB. He graduated with his MBA. Yeah, man. Congratulations. Last weekend. That's hard work. Bra. Whoa. <laughs> I thought you were just saying bra. Bravo, <laughs> bra. No, I, more, additional education is always great. Uh, so, yeah, should we get into what Rob or Jason's working on? And then we'll take some start taking some questions later. Oh, wait. Yeah. Uh, shit. Sure. Sure. Bring it up. I know everyone. Everyone tell JB uh, yeah. we missed him. Oh yeah, Darby's saying. Darby's JB saying. Knows six, how I feel. Darby's saying six street bars are packed. Ugh. Wow. <laughs> Great. All right, you want me to pull this on screen? Yeah. There you go. Remember those, Jason? How long ago was that? Uh, no. what was that? Two thousand twelve. I think that was 12 because we opened the gallery in 2012 and wow. I think that was wow. October of that year. Oh. So we're going on. Oh, eight. Universal Monster Show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. At least the, the Dracula, Bride, and Frank were, were at that show. Um, right. So, the creature so, yeah. was from my rogues gallery, which is a year later or something. Yeah. And uh, Frankenstein is in fun. the ghoulish Gary Pullen collection, correct? Or is the mummy in that collection? I can't remember. The mummy. Gary has the mummy. Um, I think Pineapple and Michael Bennett might own all the paintings at this point, other than Mummy. Wow, that's remember. crazy. They don't yeah. own the bride. Rob, did you? Yeah, oh, Rob, you Rob, have bride, yeah, don't you? Before. Yeah. Yeah, I sleep, uh, I sleep under Blackula, and Jenny sleeps under the bride painting. <laughs> I love that. Uh, yeah, so we are going to, we are going to revisit uh, 
Universal Monsters with Jason. The last ones, but but not the not the portraits. We're gonna go kind of the full uh, theatrical style posters like this. So um, I forget when we released this. It was a couple months ago, but uh, Jason knocked out this creature from the Black Lagoon. Yes, this was during the nothing good for Mondo phase, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Every week, every week I got here with somebody. I haven't bought anything from Mondo in a long time. Really, really, what are you doing patrolling it, dude? Still living in that era. But, uh, but yeah. So, so what do we have? Uh, what are we doing next? I think someone, uh, someone's is called it the it, actual but... poster. Yes, and this, this is, is it. Point. Yeah, <laughs> we're waiting for you to put it right now. That's a fucking message to you. It's kind of an unofficial. <laughs> It's kind of an unofficial Universal Monsters week. We we did a poster for the new Invisible Man. Uh, oh, there you go, right up on screen, huh? Uh, well, we did a poster by Francesco for for the new Invisible Man uh, yesterday, and it, that was also you know brilliant. And we loved uh, loved that movie, so we we're excited to do something for it. But always, always, always want to do stuff for the classic things. Um, so you can see it on screen, but these yeah, are the. Was the original plan to release Francesco's like new Invisible Man and the classic Invisible Man at the same time? But the problem was that we had this one from Jason to release it on the side. <laughs> <laughs> Move that, kick that curry can on down the line. Uh, I know, I know. I, I've been busy not traveling. I, uh, yeah, I've been a little tied up. So, uh, clearly, Jason, so clearly the, the one on the right is the largest one because that's the one we chose and to move forward with. We are at approved sketch from Universal, so now... Uh, we just have to push on Jason to to take it to final. Jason, do you want to kind of talk through uh, some of these yeah, concepts um, or what you were wanting to do? Yeah, the, the type is just uh, for position. I mean, the one on the right, it's a bit more oh. developed, but um, really the um, the pose. I always wanted to do something with that uh, that bath uh, outfit. It's so iconic and. Um, when you see the movie, there's not a, a lot to the movie. It's, it's like the same to Rob. He's not really, I think that that's that interesting, but he's not really in the bandages that much in The Mummy. This one, he's not really half invisible, half clothed too much in the movie, uh, but I really like that aspect the best about it, as, and especially this kind of smoking jacket slash robe that he wears. So I knew I wanted to have him uh, mid unwrapped. I thought that would be the most interesting. And it's also it also relates a lot to the Aurora model kits, which I was planning on using alternate uh, color. So you can see the purple, the big one there is going to be what the what the variant looks like. I don't know if you wanted to put the Aurora model about Rob. I, I just put them up there. Uh, so Eric, would you agree with me that what Jason basically did is he took the original Aurora model kit uh, box? And he did the how to draw comics the uh, Marvel way uh, to it. He made it more dynamic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. Turn that, turn that dial from three to ten real quick. <laughs> and uh, the pose, the pose. Well, I actually I kind of established a rule it with the first poster because the creature because it's kind of a, a down shot and he's taking a certain amount of space in the composition and I wanted this series to look like it went together some disjoint. Uh, imagery. So I knew I wanted the figure to take up roughly the same amount of space. And since the creature the down, I thought I'd do a, a slightly upshot for this one. And I didn't have great reference for it. If you see, re if you see still shots of, from this movie, I mean, what year is the movie? Uh, is it the thirties? It's, I'm 30s. not sure exactly it's, what. It's 1942. Really? Are you sure? No, no, but no, I just made that up. I have no idea. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So you're looking, there's not a, a really clean, even the HD DVD, it, it's it's not really high res. It's all uh, kind of jaggy, pixelated. And he's wearing like a black velour robe. So it doesn't even hold the light at all. So it just looks like a black silhouette. And then the, the collar and cuffs are, are really the only detail, his bandages, obviously. So I had to shoot a model for that to get the exact lighting, to make it a little bit more dynamic, to have those dual source lighting from um, from either side. So I didn't have access to my father, who's my regular model, because I haven't been closer than, you know, 10 feet to him in two and a half months. So I- Oh my God, wait a minute. I just realized that your face has been replaced by I am Billy G's uh, icon. I couldn't tell the difference for a second. 
<laughs> you know, I don't have to put up with that. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I was actually the model of this, and, um, which I hate because I can't control the lighting. I can't tell whether I, when I'm posing it, it feels like the pose correct, but then I look at the shots that Tanya takes and I'm like, wow, this is way off. Like, can you get, can you move my arm down here? So it matches the sketch a bit better. So anyway, I took this actually like, ties into a, that ties into a question that I think Paul had asked earlier in the chat, which was like, can you talk into what goes into art direction? Um, so if you were being kind of the model for this poster, usually if folks are familiar uh, who are watching this, it's it's your dad. Um, so if you're actually posing for the shot, like you were saying, and Tanya was photographing, like what was that, what was that kind of process like? I never, I never take photos unless I have a sketch to start from, because for some reason I can't visualize purely what the image in my mind so what i can understand oh if he's actually holding a bandage up you know he's going to have his 45 degrees or if he's got this other arm well that's a little bit like a you know it's going to be 30s and it's going to be like maybe in the center's chest you don't think of the exact placement of the or at least i don't maybe kim jung ji does but i can't visualize it that clearly in my head so i really have to draw a little just a really rough um, doodle of where where the limbs, uh, just to kind of plan out the language. And if it looks okay at that degree, when I take photos, it just kind of dials it in, and then I can play with lighting and add a little bit more, you know, edge lighting on one side or or up lighting just to make it more dramatic. Are you drawing? You have to then showing to Tanya, to Tanya, to Tanya and saying match this image. Are you asking her to yeah. to adjust you to yeah. match? Yes, I didn't. I didn't get the point, but that's what I was implying that I show her the picture and I say, move my arms until it looks just like this photo. And then I, we look at the photo together and I say, no, no, you see his arm isn't enough. I need it more like this. And then she knows what to focus on. And then she says, okay, move your arm up like, like a couple inches, you know, move your hand in towards your face just a little bit. And cause I can't feel it when I'm, hey, moved, yeah. when I'm posing. But she can see it through the camera lens. Say, match what's in the camera lens, what's on my sketch. And then hopefully the lighting rounds it out enough. And I can, I had reference of his head and his costume. Wait, how long did and it take then, to take the photo between you and, and Tanya? Seriously. The, the how, say again? how long did it take for you and Tanya to take the perfect photo? The photo session, just maybe 15, 20 minutes. Oh, really? Okay, shit. Yeah, they're, they're really photos but they have enough light and shadow that i can kind of add that light and shadow to the general forms of the reference from the movie so it's kind of a, i'm merging the two until they have you know it's an equal parts uh a screenshot and and what i took in, in my photos i'm just amazed it only took you 15 minutes uh i had uh billy take a photo of me for you to paint for that uh tell us in the crypt show and I was vetching back and forth for about like 25 minutes. So like you're very efficient. I was like sitting it, in the back kind of point, see, up here. Yeah. Let me see. I don't, up, up, up more. I don't I don't try to get the perfect photo though. The the best to do, and I actually learned this from Drew Struzan, that you take a whole bunch of photos and then you find it quite you Frankenstein it together. So I like this left hand, so I'll keep that photo, and I like this right arm the best, and I like this overall for the body. So these are the three photos that I'm going to put together. I never find one photo is perfect thing. That one of my dad as uh, as Bruce Campbell in Evil Dead poster, that probably one photo, but I was able to art him and took like, you know, dozens and dozens. So I I just took like the one in the middle, but that was pretty close to exactly what it looked on the poster because uh, I was matching my dad's lighting to whatever I had available for Bruce from a screenshot, you know? So. Did you actually wrap bandage, like did you wrap like toilet paper around you to kind of get the way it falls or any sort of bandages to, to kind of. Yeah, I not around my face. I knew I was going to use the the face dot from the movie, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I was holding bandages and they were just like tensor bandages. I think in order to have the wing from my hand, my head, in order to get bend of the material, I kind of like just wrapped it around my neck kind of loosely. So it kind of came up from the bottom. Um, and then I, I, that thing in his hand is actually his bot, I guess it's called. It's, um, it's like a, it's to cover his neck hole because obviously he, he 
you know, he's he's covered by his face, but then he would have a neck. So he wears his cravat. Uh, so he first in the movie, and then he on his head. So that's supposed to be that so white. Uh, it makes sense if you've seen the movie. It's kind of like, what? well, what's the th other thing he's holding? I just like but, that there's a monster for Universal Monsters whose iconic image, and he wears a smoking jacket, which looks like a bathrobe vest in a cravat. That's like a monster to us. Yeah, he's it's very, uh, and especially since his accent. I mean, um, uh, shit, is it, name escapes me. Claude Rains? The lead on yeah, Claude Rains. Sorry, I was going to call him Clive. Claude Rains. Um, he, or do you mean Vincent Price from Invisible Man Rain. Returns? I'm not a monster kid. I very, wouldn't know. I think you mean <laughs> Trigger. It's very debonair performances. Is you know he's got this ostu uh, play to him, so it does work with the character. I'm, I'm glad we went. I'm glad we went with that sketch too, because that's that's when I think of Invisible Man. That's exactly what I think of. It's just so burned in my brain, like the the smoking jacket and all that, and to the point where I actually kind of associate it with Mitch. Uh, years and years ago on Espresso Beans, that Mitch's uh, avatar was the Invisible Man, and so much so that it is also his caller ID picture when he calls me. So I see that every time Mitch calls me or texts me. <laughs> I totally <laughs> forgot about that. Holy shit. It was, it was me, also for many years, guys. Rob, your, it was your Teddy Roosevelt for many years too, Rob. That's yeah. I remember because it involved me. When it came out me, I was like, oh yeah, I'll remember that. But, uh, yeah. Let me ask you guys while we're on the subject, because maybe the the watchers can can suggest a, a color way for this. But because the, the Aurora model kit is going to alternate is going to be the colorway, and that also tends to be what you think of the colors in uh, in you know it's it's a lot of blues. You think of for some reason I think they made a few toys and they colored his uh, you know his robe like blue checks or whatever. And it you know what would you guys suggest for the main colorway? Would you the blue and cast a blue and then do the background like something? You guys that have any lean? Like I can come up with something. I'm just curious if you guys have any any I'm suggestions, curious. or if maybe the watchers have have suggestions. I'm actually curious. What is the name? I'm sorry. What was the color of the um, jacket in the sideshow, like eight inch tall uh, version? We uh, sold the book. Uh, I have it. It is was it burgundy uh, in that. I can't like burgundy, it burgundy, right? Like, yeah, right. It was like a like a, it was definitely warm, like a burgundy oh, or, brown or something. I like that. have the show one, the one before they got really sophisticated. And it's just kind of black and and gray. Huh. You might have, might have a screen version jacket. for all I know, because he's he's kind. Of, but I, I would I don't know. I would say definitely maybe try a, a warmer version for your for one version, but at least like a bur a burgundy with uh, like purple check or something like that. Party man confirming that it's burgundy. Ah, also, what's you, up? Man. What's up, Matt? Miss you, bud. Thank you, party man. Like we got that, that you and fact check. Uh, so yeah, this is someone asked uh, earlier if this was going to come out this year. That's the plan. Um, you know, Jason is pretty much is on the uh, on the road to final art at the moment. So yeah. um, you know, depending on on how long he wants to put it off, uh, you know, we'll <laughs> keep it going. But yeah, the plan is definitely to to release it this year and then to continue on with uh, you know rolling through all the classic monsters. Um, hey, what would be next, Jason? Since uh, LB in like what, 20? Oh, I'll tell you. List, I think it's Wolfman. Ooh, that's gonna Are you going to do like straight Wolfman or are you going to do the Wolfman from this uh, Ravel kit that looks like it's from uh, the Hammer version with the oh, shirt huh. and the cover button? Know. What is that? That's, yeah, that's kind of weird. That's how you looked from... Uh, Wolfman from uh, the Hammer Wolfman. Yeah, let's uh, not do that. No, I don't want to do that. <laughs> the, the challenge with the Wolfman, actually, challenge is, is finding reference uh, that hasn't been used to death, at least for the facial reference, because you can't really modify that too much. And you you might be able to add it like a an edge light or something like that, but there's only so many clean headshots that you can use for reference. So. I might try to scour the movie and, and see if there's a scene that isn't overplayed. I, that's what I did with the bride. Actually, your your pain the bride is not a standard image that you see everywhere on merchandise. It's just kind of a 
a middle scene where she just happens to be lit well. So I'm like, oh, that's a good one where she's never, it's never really been um, abused. So I'll use that as reference for my photo. No, I love it. It looked like Liza Minnelli from Cabaret. Um, <laughs> your next one be Wolfman. Would you ever go so, if you did all of them, all the major monsters, would you ever continue because you're such a monster kid and do things like mole people as well? <laughs> Like you've already ended with the uh, biggest bang you could, would you then throw a couple of small firecrackers out afterwards? I mean, would you consider Phantom of the Opera a smaller one? Yes, I would love to do Phantom. Yeah. Wait, I which one? Claude be... Rains or uh... Cheney? Okay, if you want. To yeah, Cheney. Um, it's been a minute. I think I the last know. one we did was was Martin's, so it's been Ooh. it's been a minute since we've done that. This begs a question, though. Let me ask you this, then, Jason: Would you want to do yeah. uh, *Hunchback of Notre Dame*? No, right? I actually have to actually haven't seen that movie so long that I don't know if there's. I mean, I'm aware of the story, and obviously, I've seen the animated movie, but I the it's been ages since I saw the original, so I don't know if there'd be enough interesting things there to to make a poster of it. There's tons of interesting things. It's just, you know, Hunchback of Notre Dame, you're like, eh, I guess. I'd rather no, have I, him do about I, anything I, else. Yeah. Wait, what? Well, Paul, I'd rather Paul have him do almost walk. anything. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. If there's, if there's no other properties in there. Right. Uh, London After like Midnight? It. Really, Jason? No. Yeah, Old Dark <laughs> House. <laughs> oh, yeah. Old Dark House is good, man. What are you talking about? It's a good movie. A couple of folks asking for Coppola's Dracula. I would love. God, I wish. Oh, I would Rory love that. Oh, cool. Rory, I wouldn't mind doing some, some, sketch some, about that. some modern ones. This. Some what modern? Under, that'd be great. Yeah, like like Coppola's Dracula. That'd be great. More modern. More, you know. Easy. That's modern. Uh, Nineteen ninety-two. Yeah. You want to do the Benicio yeah. del Toro Wolfman too? <laughs> <laughs> we could just we could just scrap the plastic. Uh, just scrap the classic Universal Monsters and let's do a Dark Universe series. So I like, I, I have high hopes. <laughs> I'd still pay money. Sure. I, I do like that Elizabeth Moss uh, movie. There's a lot of plot holes in it, but it's still a really enjoyable movie. Uh, but I agree. There are a lot of plot holes in Creature from Black Lagoon, too. Yeah, I was going to say, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy how the original Universal Monsters are airtight. I know. Frankenstein made sense, but now? <laughs> Deal with the science, people. Plot holes. <laughs> Did you see those explosions in space believe, in Star I Wars? Believability holes. I mean, things that wouldn't have happened, or I can I mean, I just can't think of specific that one. I want to hear about your pothole. Let's hear it. Let's hear about what's terrible. Um, <laughs> first of all, oh, wait, it's crazy. crazy. They, brought, they, they brought a guy back to life with electricity. It's insane. No, no, no. She'd be the first person they suspect uh, uh, for his. Well, never mind. Never. I don't want to go. Wait, into what movie spoiler. are we talking about here? <laughs> uh, the Elizabeth Moss, uh, Invisible Man. Oh, the only just the, the poster for. Okay. Wait, is that yeah, the one? I'm not. Never mind. I'm, no. No, I'm going to do a I'm little. Gonna, I'm not going to. Yeah, don't spo no spoilers. This is spoiler free no, no, zone, no, no. bro. Yeah, this is spoiler free. Ooh, I didn't. I'm sorry. I didn't even think about that. I forgot you could actually. Cause it, we're, here's a weird thing. It was the last movie I watched in the theater was Invisible Man, and it was an uncomfortable experience because everyone was too terrified to make a noise or cough. I think the last movie I saw in theaters yeah, was no. It was it's definitely Sonic. Sonic was what. Oh, Sonic. Sonic was oh, awesome. man, we watched Sonic the other night. It is really something. <laughs> I liked it, man. I was into it. Did you, guys did you, that, did you watch Scoob? New, uh... I haven't watched Scoob, but I really want to. Uh, Matt, Our buddy Matt Taylor did uh, some work on the end credits. Yeah, his end credits are really good. But um, yeah. it's interesting. I didn't know this going in. Rob, do you know anything about Scoob? I yeah. A little bit, yeah. This will tickle your old man fancy that the villains are Dick Dastardly and, and uh, Muttley. I already knew that, and you're correct. It did tickle my old man fancy. And hmm. C Captain Caveman's in it as well. Dude, I couldn't believe everybody they had in it. That's what I was. I it tempted me to almost rent it, but then I was like, I'm not paying money to rent Scoob. Oh my Tracy God. Morgan, Tracy Morgan, Captain Caveman. It's pretty. Uh, what I did not know that. Wow, that's. Oh, you might have. Ooh, that might take me over. That might make me rent it. It's a pretty complicated Can plot. Art at the end. What? Mitch did they animate art at the end? Oh, Matt did. 
um, a lot of illustrations for the end, and they they basically did kind of like a three D ish Ken Burns effect where they kind of panned and scanned around his art, but things would pop out and stuff like that. Um, oh, it's it, but it's a lot. I mean, it's like twenty screens or more. I bet it's so good. Who does it's the so voice cool. for Blue Falcon? Um, well, I'll look up the IMDb for you here. I thought <laughs> Stephen Colbert talking. would be a perfect casting. But. You guys keep talking. By the way, chat, if anybody has any questions, just start sending them through, man. We're, we'll just kind of roll through the, the back half of this. Blue questions. Falcon, Mark Wahlberg. For us, for Jason. All right. I guess. Um, Dick Dasterly is Jason Isaacs. Uh, Will Forte is Shaggy. That's on point. I'm not hey. advocating. I mean, the movie was fine. Jeff, before you agree to turn a print into a series, do you have a plan in your head and have a clear picture of what you're going to do for each? I'm not sure if that's a uh, question for, for, Jason, I think, yeah, for, for Jason or for... I mean, for, it might be the same for for all the, all the artists in your roster, but um, I don't... I mean, other than I know I'm going to kind of mimic the compositional feel and and the 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 maybe the crack to give it a, a similar feel. Rob Rob used to tell me, don't worry about making the series look like a series, just make a, a good post, which which is good advice and it's worked for say Martin Anson. But with my stuff, I feel like it's stronger if it if it looks additionally cohesive or at least has the same type of style to it. Or I know, but it doesn't, like feel it, it doesn't feel like, I don't know, they still feel like unique posters. I don't feel like you're, like, between this and Invisible Man already, it, it still feels like oh. distinct posters. Okay. Martin well, maybe wanted that's a, to have maybe them all match a, up, like, a share a background or some shit. And I was like, just make the strongest poster possible. Know. Once you put yourself into a series, right. you end up shackling yourself. But for you, especially at this, there's so much exploration with color. I don't, I'm more worried about people shackling themselves with the composition. I don't really... See that too hard with you here. I mean, you got Hold worms on, eye and bird's eye between the two. Hold on, yeah. Joshua Medina's on to something here. Will you click his comment here? About five up from the bottom. Uh, Jason, you should consider doing like a skill share because I've sat in a room with you where you've taught other artists to paint and it's fascinating. Oh, well, thanks. Uh, Mark Bricky and I uh, from Adventure Time discussed, he actually wanted to uh, film me and have a conversation with me while I work or just have a conversation about whatever, just bullshit while I work and film the whole thing and then maybe do a time lapse of it at some point. So I need somebody to help me. Yeah, that's not that. what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you actually yeah. talking about technique uh, for people that want to learn how to paint from you. In a black room. Well, that's like, <laughs> like a one-on-one -on -one personal like no, Bob like Ross. you were Bob Ross. Yeah, like, <laughs> like you could record, you could record, you could do a skill share. So basically, you could do a painting class online where you, you talked about technique while you're painting, and then you it's painting with Jason Edmiston, and then people subscribe to it or whatever and pay to watch it. Um, yeah, I mean, Draplin's done them for how to make love. Yeah, I think I need somebody to help me set that up though of course I, yeah I you, you would need someone to film film billy g yeah. billy g where you at <laughs> i'll fly you to toronto i'll figure it out i love chucky just really keeps referring to fly to you. i love that chucky just keeps referring to you as jed i love that's catching on <laughs> paul had a follow-up question on art direction uh what about from the mondo guys that's us what do you guys look for when artists are submitting sketches etc Mm. For, for a poster that we've already hired for, or yeah, it's supposed to be hired for. We need a poster that's we haven't seen before, or that's at least really cool and dynamic. Something that grabs you. Hopefully, yeah, it's hard. Fun. It's hard. It's sort of hard to put into black and white, right? Like I think we we usually know, and I I think Rob, you want to pull back Jason's sketches for Invisible Man? We can kind of talk about that while we talk. Talk yeah, and I think a decent. I mean, the majority of the time we're usually on the same page, right? Um, like to me, if we're using this as an example, as Rob said when he was referencing the how to draw comics the Marvel way, it's it's the most dynamic of the three. Um, I, I think the sideways one is a the middle one, the profile is a really cool variant, but it, it doesn't quite grab you as much um, 
by the throat as much as the third it's one not does. Threatening. I it's also science. like the title. I'm saying yeah, the middle one's I also like the title because... placement. Eric had but... a had a great uh and it's it's kind of funny, but oh jeez. Uh, I think Eric's <laughs> point was <laughs> want to rethink his uh his uh scientific equipment placement in the foreground because it looks oh. quite phallic. Uh, yeah, I forgot about that. Shit. This would have been the first comment by one of you assholes out there. Uh, <laughs> it would have either skyrocketed sales or plummeted them. So thank you for being on top of that. No, it's like Mitch and Rob said. I mean, I, I can't speak to it better than they do, but we're pretty, by this point, we're pretty aligned. Um, whenever sketches come in, we, we all are pretty much thinking the same thing most of the time. Um, but you, you also just kind of know. Um, but for this one in particular, yeah, that third one, that yeah. we're ultimately excited to go with. It's just, it's super dynamic. It's exciting. It's scary. Um, and, and he just, he looks awesome. It's a great, just kind of hero shot of, you know, one of the, one of the cooler monsters. So um, I guys like it. You I should also like, consider what? back to our thing we were talking about before this, you should also consider doing a skill share for how to make your color separations because yeah. when people ask how to make color separations, we make them by your book and oh. learning color separations from a book is fairly difficult. I would say. I don't know. Everyone I can keeps saying they do I mean, it really quick. When for reading yeah. Jason's book, Rich Kelly was doing it like in that same day. Okay. Yeah, Rich, Rich was actually he was trying to figure out this was so we were working on Rich Kelly's Big Trouble in Little China, which which came out a couple of weeks ago. But that poster had been in development probably about a year and a half, two years. Um, and when he was first just kind of exploring how to how to make the colors work or how to make the execution work. Um, when, when he was actually drawing final, uh, he was like, hey, how does how does Jason do it? And then, like Mitch said, almost several artists have been like, you should just pick up his book. There's like chapters that he goes into really brilliant depth on, on how he makes transparencies work and how he makes color separations work um, to kind of achieve the maximum effect with like very little colors um and it's it's brilliant so and then later i think a couple of days after we had kind of pointed rich in that direction he had uh posted just a couple like exploratory studies of of jack on instagram and just like i think I he mentioned yeah. he mentioned in the caption that like i'm reading jason's book and just like playing with some of the things he talks about and um it's amazing so if there's any any it viewers was, yeah it was really watching, nice so you're saying pick up the book right where is it available? Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. on, <laughs> any viewers that are watching, seriously, <laughs> if you guys, if you guys are curious, it's it's a it's a fascinating book, and and there's a lot of great tips and insights from Jason directly. Jack Hughes does have a uh, good point, though. Rich, Rich Kelly is not a normal man. Well, I was going to say <laughs> he true. picked it up really quickly because he's a painter, and I think people that watercolor paint or paint in layers can 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 get can grasp that quicker. Sarah Deck grasped it really quickly too because. She, she paints the I do well, a similar way in, in layers and and if you understand and how colors add on top of each other, you separate things. You kind of do it in reverse, like doing it with ink. Um, so it's it's not a stretch. It's a stretch. People that are are doing a lot of uh, flat colors and really uh, you know uh, more straightforward shapes, no no gradients, that sort of thing, no transies. You know, it's a bit more of a stretch. Yeah. I knew I would never be able to comprehend it because I've been a failure at painting every time I've tried, so I didn't even bother to read those chapters. But people who have read them have told me, it's so easy. I'm not kidding. I've heard that three or four times at least. And they uh, all picked up Visceral on that recommendation and right away. Hey, nope. son. <laughs> Jason, your son is in the chat here. Uh-huh. Uh, Chris hey, is asking hey, son. You. Man, What's up, man? Got your uh, new fee uh, rum. That's what I'm drinking tonight. Chris is asking, when are we getting a new poster book? I'm not sure if that's a question for Mondo or if Jason's going to do a follow-up uh, book. But we are working on, if it's for Mondo, we are working on um, the next, the follow-up to the one that we did a couple years ago. Well, that's interesting. Jason, what would your follow-up to this rule be? Are you just going to wait till you collect enough stuff? Would it be another eyes book? What do you think your next tome? I thought about that. Yeah, my be? next book, I want it to be an eyes book. But I do another comprehensive version of of my work. But I don't know if I do a sequel or if it, or I just move and kind of do a, what do you call it when you like a second edition but with added stuff like with you know a revised like a revised, edition, like, an expand, like expanded yeah yeah but with and text and 
sometimes I've seen books by say uh, Ron English or uh, Robert Williams, and they'll they'll include a bunch of this stuff in their past book, like a brand new one. Yeah, you revised know, like, and updated, right. revised and expanded. That's, that's all sorts. Of I guess things. so. Yeah, something like that. I do, and then, uh, but the eyes keep going. I mean, I paint about uh, I don't know thirty or or so new year, so it keeps growing. When do you think you'll stop painting them? When they stop paying me, Rob. <laughs> uh, Josh was asking, tell us about a time when the other two overruled a poster you really wanted to have. What an answer of artistic integrity. Hey, <laughs> two peas in the same shitty <laughs> pod. <laughs> That's true. Uh, you should hear the great conversations I had with my accountant about artistic integrity. <laughs> Uh, what was that called? It's Newbie Rum. <laughs> to answer your question, Jim, uh, I mean, that's that's sort of what works best with me, Mitch, and Rob being kind of a three person team. Um, yeah. We subscribe to the age old democratic process. And if two people are pretty excited on something, then more than likely we'll kind of go that direction. If the other person feels pretty strongly, um, you know, it's, we'll no, it's a situation where the one person goes, all right, let's go ahead and see how this goes. So you can hopefully go. Well, I told you so. We're like, hey, you guys were right. Usually, usually yeah. what I usually what I do if these guys want to make something that I really don't want to make is I put forth the challenge where I say, "All right, you got to frame it on your wall for a year." Yeah, I've taken. Yeah, that you're challenge. the most cautiously optimistic. I, I out of out of the three, you're. You mean, I think you're less likely to risks, but you're you're not. Oh, that won't work. You're like, okay, I'm I'm willing Mitch? to see it. I don't really buy it, but. I'll give you. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. You don't. Uh, you don't ever tell, know if we really or something. I was going to say. I'd say Mitch is the most the most risk taking of of the three of us, as far as artists and really? uh, posters go. Oh yeah. I'm also Maybe probably the one. Then. I'm also I, probably no, I'm the one. For, that, I'm more for what's going to sell. What's going to make people like super happy. I'm also the one that's. I mean, we agree that I'm also probably the one that's most likely to not want to do something. Yeah. Because, yeah. Jason, if I just go to my own devices, you've seen my hetero drawings. It'd all just be misery at all times. It is. I mean, it's it's a yeah. – I try. Oh, I really try in all aspects of this job to keep the big picture in mind. And so if we're trending too far into one look, I try to keep that in mind. If we're trending too far into one type of movie, I try to keep that in mind. Because it's so hard to not get locked into things being easy. Because if you – if you start selling 10 posters in a row pretty easily that are all a certain kind of poster, it's real hard to not just go, well, we need to make more of those. But then you talk to somebody that's like, you know, I'm sick of those or Mondo's boring because they all look like this. I really try to keep all of that in mind and, and take a more macro view of our output of posters. Um, Rob's yeah. probably more micro, I would say. I mean, was, in between. If it, it was, yeah, you yeah, and yeah. Eric against me, it will usually go through. If it's you and me against Eric, it will usually go through. If it's me and Eric against you, then we seem to have a longer talk about it. Because <laughs> Eric and I are both like, shit. Man. I don't know. You, you've occasionally <laughs> pulled your – I'm I'm the co – you've occasionally pulled your seniority rank to try to overrule us both when you've been really mad about something. Has it ever paid off? No. Where's I think so. You, you, you guys have a good variety of, of A demos and all trusts. So you kind of, you kind of spread a pretty uh, gamut of of what you're into and what what you think will sell. So I think that's um, also key for, for Mondo as a company. You're not all into the same stuff. So yeah. it's, we've got yeah, a lot of our Venn diagram has got a lot of overlap, though. <laughs> Mitch has yeah, more. So does Jallo on his. Yeah. Eric's got more X Men on his, and I've got more Judy Garland yeah. on mine. So yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, Gigan Garland. Uh, Billy was asking, uh, with what's been able to be achieved with screen printing, a lot of that due to the guy in the chat here, um, do you still mainly look for art or artists who can whose work can translate to that medium? No. Well, I've made kind of a journey because we used to only reach out to artists that we thought could were made for screen printing. And then you're right, a lot of changes happened and we definitely drifted into just we'll figure it out later. I almost think that it's it's kind of time to start going back to some more spot color and black line style on some things. Um, 
the, the posters that sort of made Mondo <laughs> famous in the first place, just because at some point we're getting too close to what we were trying to be different then, you know? And so I, I definitely welcome sometimes things looking more like a gig poster or more like a, a six color spot color screen print versus a 12 color diffusion dither, et cetera, et cetera. And so again, that's something I try to keep in mind and mix it up and um, just, just have a little bit of everything, I guess. No, I, I totally agree with you. Anything that gives uh, Jason less work, I'm totally for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm in full agreement with which, because I don't think my work looks at all like what you guys initially came famous for. Basically bringing in the gig poster aesthetic to movie posters, made true alternative movie posters. My stuff is more traditional movie poster. It's not, it's not really alternative. So I, I agree that I don't do well. And I, I like when you guys bring in a Tyler type of a, like, that's what gets me the most excited. Tomer Hanuka, it's like, oh, I have never seen this before. Everybody's seen my style before. I like doing my style, but I'm not going to try to talk. Work, I just I disagree with you though, Jason. I think your style is basically a cool movie poster. The problem is there's a lot of movie posters that have that style that are just boring or compositionally who gives a shit. And then something like your Hateful Eight, guess what? That's like one of the movie posters that you fucking bid on because it's a fucking cool poster. That's your downhill racer. It's very nice. So wow. yeah, you're a different animal. You're not going, hey guys, for Hateful Eight, I thought I'd just do eight giant heads. Here you go. No, you didn't do that. Yeah. yeah. I, I also want to give some people wanting you to. I want to give a shout out to uh, to John Smith um, on our team who does all the poster set or a lot of the, if not all poster separations. Um, you know, usually if we're working or seeking out an artist or thinking about asking an artist about something, we will reach out to John and say, hey, before we get this rolling, uh, what do you think? You know, we'll send it and kind of pass it by his eye. Um, prior to John Smith, Jason was the person that we would reach out to and say, hey, what do you think? If we need you, can we? Can you help us out and uh, and break the sound and, and build the up? So, um, I've used yeah. Oh, so John's kind of like five, Scotty five, from five. Star Trek. He'll be like, I guess eight or nine colors. Then it comes in. He's like, Hey, I was able to do it in six. You're welcome. I mean, John really has. It can't yeah. be. It can't be overstated. He he's really changed the game for us. I mean, it, exactly what you asked the question about. It used to be really really narrowing as far as what artists we could look for. Um, and now we can approach virtually anyone and figure out how to print their work. I mean, yeah, on the Scott C thing too, the Star Wars poster we did a couple months ago, right? Like that was, Scott's work traditionally is is all G Clay's, um, but whenever we were thinking, well, this is gonna be a 24 by 36 poster that's gonna be pretty expensive, we turned to John and said, hey, this is a watercolor painting. Can you break it down into steps? Um, and he was able to get it down, I think it's like a nine color, yeah. nine or 10 colors, roughly. Wow. He told me, he's like, yeah, I just bought Jason's uh, Visceral. I got totally figured out. <laughs> Do not insult the man. He, I, I learned a lot of stuff from him. But yeah, super, super shout. Yeah. I'd love to John. see his no, John, process. John's I'm, the sure different than mine. I'm sure he's doing with channels or something to select colors because I'm doing that. So John I'd Smith is an if I can utilize that. I've known John Smith for a very long time too. For those that don't know, John Smith used to do a lot of concert posters. Um, he was he used to have a collaborative project with Nate Duvall and did a lot of posters, like and a early lot. Mondo posters too, man. Yeah, mm -hmm. he used to do a lot of posters, and then he was the cutter and shipper at DNL for years as well. Um, so yeah, before he lived in Austin, I, I, we've known him for quite a long time. We should. Vent some Mondo talk, we should show off his unproduced UHF posters. Oh, yeah. One was one of my favorite things I wish we had made. It's so great. Rich it's Kelly's UHF poster was originally supposed to be a John Smith UHF poster. Rich Kelly was brought in at the last minute. John Smith's computer blew up, but he had this awesome poster <laughs> of a cloudy sky and Weird Al's portrait done in lightning hitting the <laughs> antenna. And it was so perfectly, I was like, damn, they figured it out. And he's like, my computer blew up and... Uh, it's not coming back to life. Sorry. Deal with it. And we call Rich. Jason, would you consider oh, wow. collaborating with another? Yeah, people might. Uh, yeah, print? yeah, yeah. Who would that be? You've done I, love, I would. Uh, I love the collabs you've done with Sunny Man when you guys do do something. Oh, or do uh, your, yeah, I mean, your, I, your... I collaborated with, uh, with Mike Mill as well. Uh, well, the collaboration he had already finished, and I, you know, reworked it in my style. 
but uh, he approved him. No, that's the collaboration. Um, I'd love to. I'd love to pick somebody that's wildly different. Yeah, suggest it. I'd work with anything you suggest, honestly. Okay, great. I want you to repaint one of my head red Judy's real quick. There you go. <laughs> so quick. Yeah, people might remember Absolutely. the the famous. People might remember the famous story about us releasing a Dumbo print and an It's Alive print on the same day. Uh, that It's Alive poster was by John Smith, which I did not remember until Google right. right now. <laughs> I'll tell you something else funny about that. He did such a good job on that fucking poster of a fetus that I got asked to do a Doug Stanhope poster, and I had a great idea for it that I won't repeat on this program, but... I was like, I can't do it, but you know what? John can do that exact idea. It also involved Doug stand up as a fetus, and that It's a Live poster sold it. It did not sell well. <laughs> <laughs> so it also involved a coat hanger. I'll leave it at that. Well, oh, geez. Typical yeah. old Rob Jones work. Oh, yeah. Mitch and Rob Dancer is the best. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Eric has to hear the real, the real banter. <laughs> we're the, we're the, the angel and devil on his shoulder. <laughs> But they're just passing the horns back and forth to each other. We really are. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, Jason gets it. Let's be clear. Jason gets it worse than anyone. Oh, you yeah. You have an easy time <laughs> compared to Jason. No shit. Oh, poor Jason. I, I enjoy it. I have some sort of sick. Uh, You're a masochist I'm, if you do that. Too. Yeah, I'm a masochist. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, yeah, every once in a while we'll have the uh, <laughs> let's review Jason and his career and where it's going phone call and it's a lot of fun for him <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile he's like i make more money than both of you put together fuck you <laughs> I don't, well he never yeah. reminds us so much uh chris is asking for more stand and vince universal monsters i would love that yeah there was a stand and vince you know what i don't give a fuck i'm that drunk there was a stand and vince son of frankenstein i could show you the rough maybe one day Ooh. yes oh. oh come on bring it out it's really, jason it's really cool Oh, there are three Ross swords. I love their stuff. That that mummy piece is amazing. Yeah, yeah, their creatures really good. It, they're, I mean, they're good. Again, you have to admit, for a for a monster that's kind of like when you're a kid, the lamest monster, the mummy. I mean, you can imitate him with toilet paper, but that's the end of it. It's terrible. Yet, why do all of the artists that work that do a monster series of Mondo produce the mummy poster as their greatest Universal monster poster? It's my favorite poster from from Martin. It's my favorite one thing from about it, it's, like, it's like a proto zombie or something. It's great. And it's my favorite from Santa Vince. That's ama it's an amazing poster. Yeah. 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 Really great. Jason, would you uh, would I'd you like want to do a poster? Would you want to do a poster for the original Suspiria? <laughs> I would love that. that movie. Yeah. I don't know what to do that hasn't been already done brilliantly by other artists. Um uh, uh, Maddie did a great one. Uh, Samalin did a great one. I Jessica could... Seaman did the best one. But what would you do? It, it'd have to be something with color because that movie's all about color and. Um, I don't know what specifically, but something psychedelic. Yeah, I don't know if the landline one can be topped, even by Jed. All they're all great. that's a, that's see that's the problem is finding something that is visually interesting but hasn't been done to death I, okay, there's a look, few movies can't really be revisited for another 10 15 years like you know yeah I, if you have these in in the in the in the shoot but like um robocop or alien you know predator or something there's so many movie posters about them we need a break before we can get a fresh take on them so that's the trick is finding something that hasn't been yeah, but the problem Overly. is you, you say that, and then every once in a while you'll have someone like, let's say, Erickson with Alien after there's been a zillion Alien yeah. posters, and then Erickson comes in. Yeah, and goes, well, challenge. Here you go. It's not impossible, but it's a it's a bit of a it challenge. Is Ten um, years after everyone. I'm trying to pitch you guys on doing a, a, a screamer or a uh, the a crow. A what? A, a scream. Oh, a scream, scream or the crow. Yeah, I don't know. Do you, do you think you can beat Gary's scream Gary, poster? It's Gary's so scream poster is, is an all timer. Right? I have an idea that I pitched to Rob uh, that I'd like to show. Oh, look at Rob's face. Look at yeah, Rob's here's face. The deal. It was so good, Jason. I've already forgotten what the idea was. So go ahead and well, it begin. It, you remember our conversation? <laughs> yeah, about it was so, I was going to say it was so good he didn't tell any of us about it. I remember you know, that. I remember talking about Gary's. That's all I remember. <laughs> it was B had an issue with the with 
everybody that's included in the license. Oh, oh. Uh, Jason wanted to know whether I could use the mask or not. And I let him know that you do have to work with the mask company in addition to the studio. So that's why, because Gary's originally had the mask as part of the. Uh, I can't believe the studio hasn't just paid it. to buy that out at this point. Because they know they've got a precious jewel mm -hmm. and they're shit. They're probably making a ton of money selling that mask. Yeah. yeah. Why'd you give it up? Oh yeah, we buy your kids scream also. Shout out that it's real good too. Well, you know, Harman makes yeah. me actually you guys me curious. Jason, can you describe what you would do for the crow? Oh, this fucking dog. Actually, barking. you gave me the idea that I was gonna explore. <laughs> I don't, I don't have my own uh, unique idea yet, but I liked your suggestion of doing something of him with it, um, standing in the, in the circular window. It'd be more of a mood piece with, with yeah. It's just you copying yourself from the Joker, it though. Shitty yeah. If I it. Yeah. yeah. It would just be you doing It'd your Joker kind of from uh, of it. Hmm? It, it would have the same kind of vibe, I guess, as the Nicholson piece I did. Like that yeah. kind of like standing in a circular window with the crow or something like that. But it'll be moot to describe it. Oh, that sounds like a great, it sounds like a shitty poster. But no, it sounds I, cool. In but my head, yeah. You think you oh, also, I bring fully, in, like bring surprises people. Oh, Remember, I'm a guy who I have eight Andorian dolls all lined up. I will, I'm fine to repeat yeah, yeah. things over yeah. and over again. But I don't know if that's a good another, thing for you. Another thing with that property, everybody just does white and bloody a shot of red or a shot of white. I want to do something that brings in color. So you can still do a black and white heavy portrait but if you you can bring in a bunch of psychedelic colors or something in insignificant oh, right ways or, or yeah i'm all for you doing the crow if you want yeah. to do the crow eric you agree with me right the crow is more of a psychedelic kind of movie than a fucking emo <laughs> movie right not in, i mean it's totally <laughs> hate ashbury right yeah it, in, it really in, it pushed forth the hippie movement more than the goth movement really <laughs> I want the old in, crow in, to be all day. <laughs> <laughs> you ever seen a tie dye shirt, man? But like, imagine if that were a poster. Oh my god! You see what I have? I to would put up kill with? to get a crow psychedelic so uh, tie dye shirt. That'd be amazing. <laughs> oh, Ali, if you're watching, please make crow tie dye oh, shirts. Should. That'd be so cool. We could get man. We could give it that. We could just do a crow with those erotic oh. colors. Once again, uh, Paul, Daddy, Paul, 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 Paul Deschamps, uh, Paul Deschamps comment here. What do you say? The most recent one? Yeah, about doing, uh, let me tell you, we've got a series coming for you this year. Oh, yeah. Paul, you're going to be happy twice and over and over and over again for those two projects. Maybe. Yeah, but yeah, we've definitely got some titles. We've got a series this year. We're working with a studio. Um that involves doing a number of smaller films that we've never done before. Not so small that no one's heard of them, but like pretty good independent films that we haven't done before. A lot one, of so. one, one, one that we've done. Done. So give me a break. A few that we've done, but but for the most part, it's ninety nine percent new titles um, and stuff that we're super excited about. And all the artists that we have assigned to it are. And we're not talking about eight two four. No. We've yeah. done a lot of A24. I know. I just want to be, that might be the first thing they, they suppose as I drink more rum. But yeah, um, we're definitely, we, we do try to keep an active, happening this year, yes, Paul, we do try to keep an active uh, mind on mixing up the level of titles we do too. We try to do a decent number of independent films, a decent number of big films, and I, I don't think we would be happy going all one way or the other. So we, we do try to keep it a mix. Yeah. Uh, we can't do any hint hints. Um, other, uh, well. It's an independent yeah. studio. An independent it's studio. Uh, okay, we'll leave it at that. Oh God. Uh, there, was a, there was a question asking for video game related prints. Um, why don't we tease what we have coming up? Because we don't, don't show, we, we're not going to show the image. It's still going to be a surprise, but say the artist in the property that we just got in last week. For a video game? Yeah. Yeah, sure. We're doing, we're doing a, uh, a poster for Katamari Damacy by Claire Hummel. And it's really, really exciting. Amazing. It's awesome. So, um, yeah, we love doing video game stuff, man. Uh, so there's, there's a handful of things in the works. Um, the one that we just mentioned and then a few, a few others uh, that we can't really say a whole lot about. But hopefully. You know, it, 
to speak to the art direction aspect, that's what gets easy at a point when you are able to hire people like Jason and like Claire, where she's sending in everything we could make a poster of. Mm -hmm. Every one she sent in, we're like, this would be good. This would be good. This would be good. So no, guess what? It's sadly sometimes the easiest job ever because no matter what you pick, it's going to succeed when you're able to hire people like Claire Hummel and Jason Emerson because he's here and I have to say it. <laughs> <laughs> got his ass. Oh, dude. No fucking screech rum got my ass, dude. Jesus. Too Paul, going back to what we were talking about with your question. Yes, it is happening this year. Yeah, man. Uh, Holy shit. Fucking fucking it up with the good questions. It's almost so, it's almost time for me to go on a bike ride with the boys before curfew at eight o'clock. So we'll give it a few more minutes here. Um yeah. still waiting for that Return of the Living Dead poster. Uh-huh. Sooner oh. than you sooner than you think, probably. Dude, depending on what you think. Be a motherfucker. Go ahead and we go. Just, we just being free. Take it uh, easy, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care, just tell him. I'm drinking water, dude. I realize I need to take it easy. Any any small hint for next week's print? I think I mentioned at the last happy hour we did, but um, Batman the Animated Series is uh, some more Erickson greatness coming next week. That's going to be awesome. Do you hey, have James. any new... Uh, I was gonna... Yeah, go ahead. Would you ever do a Batman the Animated Series poster? Would you feel no. like you're like with your guys, with your friend's girlfriend, sort of? Uh, just Justin did it so perfectly. I don't think I, there's any meat left on that bone. Now, so even if you did, so you're admitting you couldn't beat Justin Erickson. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, unless he did something like what I did with the Evil Queen and did like a three dimensional version of 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 the. Yeah, that, you know what I mean. Like, yeah, he's so that. so stone, nothing to it. It be you know. Stone faced. It's so simple, you know. Ooh, God, I have some ideas, but I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you after this is over. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> I have some ideas about what you had said earlier to those those demos that maybe we can work something out. Uh, no, okay. So I, guess, gonna... I guess I'm gonna check too. <laughs> Fuck, it's pretty good. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. <laughs> Seeing the chat kind of slow down, so I guess we'll I guess we'll start wrapping it up here. Yeah. Um, Jason, thank you so much for uh, for jumping on with us, man. Hope yeah, you... thanks for having me, guys, and thanks for jumping on board, y'all. Good talking to you again. I miss you guys. It's like I only see you at, at shows, and I don't know when I'll be back in the states. So I hope it's not too long. But thanks. Well, for Jason, I always saw my grandmother at Christmas. Yet I loved her very much, and the same for you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> what a strong word. Uh, hang on, I'm going to wrap up some questions here. I think here. you're as cool Josh. as my grandmother, Jason. That's what I was saying. <laughs> Josh, yes, more Matthew Woodson. Of course. More Come on, more. let's fuck it up. Let's, let's reveal some shit. Come on, let's tease. That's what I'm shooting in for. I don't know if we, we'll talk. We'll talk later. Maybe on the next one. I don't like to reveal Woodson stuff till it's real. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to do a Bobby J terrible reference to fucking tease. If you like re eternal recurrence, then you'll like Matthew Woodson's next project with us. Yeah, I know that was obscure. There. <laughs> Big fucking wah 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 wah. wah. <laughs> Here's, Here's the Nietzsche motherfucker out there that's gonna be like, oh, I know these things. Rob always yeah. likes to end things on a cool story, bro. So, <laughs> <laughs> where's the can cricket sound effect? Eric, Eric, can you get a cricket sound on board next time? Give me some screech fucking rum. <laughs> Wipe this terror away. I can Thank hear Jenny laughing downstairs. Wow, on top. <laughs> Thank we've you. We've seen some questions about. We've seen some questions about. Like it was a fucking uh, game show blooper downstairs, dude. Holy shit. <laughs> we've seen some questions about vinyl and pin or vinyl and uh, puzzles and stuff like that. Those are best asked on the the wider Mondo happy hours. Um, we pretty much bury our nose into posters, and that's where we live. So. Cool. I'd like to All hear right. more about your two. About your you guys what? talk about that on what? your toys, your upcoming yeah. toys. Yeah, well, we usually have Hector, oh, yes, Hector, and or yeah. Mikey on the on the kind of the all team happy hours. So 
you can tune in on one of those and ask all the questions you want in the chat. Lavender wants to know who drinks everyone else under the table. I don't drink. Eric barely drinks. Jason versus Rob. And I'm always under the uh, table uh, already. Just Rob. Just I'm under Rob. the table from the first drink, dude. Are you shitting me? Have you seen <laughs> any photograph of my ass at a, mono, uh, at a monocon? Christ. Uh, Super Funk 1 million. Every poster is rolled by hand. Um, Eric, who is now our creative director here, used to roll posters for a living for, with Mondo. I still mm -hmm. roll posters for a half a living. Oh, half? half? Well, half to Mondo and half to me. Five, five percent. percent. Shout out to to our shipping team, uh, but yeah. yeah, all posters all posters are rolled by hand um, by a very small crew of about four to five people. Um, brilliant, amazing humans. So, thank you for that. Any sneakerheads? I used to be right. too old. <laughs> too old. There we. I have to break oh, in order to do it. I buy the random pair of Jordans, but I wear them. I don't. I don't. You got those Black Panther sneakers. Not one to rock, like, one to stack. I wanted to buy them, no. and you had them, so I couldn't fucking buy them. Uh, I think I the gave those. I care about those Freddy Kruegers. Is what? It's all on. What Jason say? Those Freddy Kruegers. Those cusps. Oh, Freddy Kruegers. You look like Freddy. Oh. You look oh, like Freddy. Paul's asking how COVID. Like uh, Jason. Fred Wait, do it you hasn't really, really, hang on, hang on. Let me adjust this for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't really affected, thankfully. Um, you know, we we primarily work with with DL and Lady Lazarus, and then Static Medium for G Clays. Um, and you know, I think some of those teams might be operating on some semi skeleton crews. Uh, but for the most part, I mean, they've been keeping operations rolling, and we've been super thankful for it. But um, yeah, they've been killing it and keeping it going to the best they can. Jason, do you remember that fuck freaking uh, you look like Freddy comment that Mitch is referencing? <laughs> <laughs> you look like Freddy. Yeah, I'm going to tell a story real quick. It's a good thing to end on. <laughs> I go to Fright Man. I hope she's watching. Yeah, I hope so too. This is great. I'm like, okay, shout out, Shout out to that girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we get there. And uh, I... Gary Pullen has all these like billion fans that show up are like all these like it's like the Beatles at Fright Man. <laughs> and all these like girls are like, oh my god, it's Gary Pullen. I'm like, yeah, I know that guy. I'm like, oh hey, uh, you look like Freddy. I was like, oh, because <laughs> of the sweater. And this is her actual response. And I want to be clear, I'm not trying to get laughs. This is exactly the voice and accent it was delivered in. No. <laughs> i.e. my face was freddy shout to, shout to that girl because she got rob's ass for like the last three years he's been torn up by this it's she so good oh, yeah. but the worst torn up the worst was sdcc when i go outside it goes like oh my god can i take a photo with you i'm like oh oh someone recognizes you from monitor she's like i love cosplay i love back to the future <laughs> i'm wearing some freddy sweater i'm always wearing that means my cosplay was my face as Doc Brown. Uh, <laughs> Doc Brown, who loves Freddy for some fucking reason. You look uh, like Freddy. Not, not to mention that girl that, that spotted you in, in France and called you a chicken. No, that was a guy <laughs> who called me Poulet, Macabre Poulet, i.e. Scary Chicken. Scary Chicken. <laughs> Price is girlfriend. He said, I'm going to go Macabre Poulet. <laughs> He did this motion, and his girlfriend did this. <laughs> and I'm sitting out there going, I'm just smoking a cigarette and going after my pizza. So, really? Rob That's called me. Outside. Fuck you, France. Rob called me from every France, time. And he said, Edison, you speak French, right? What does macabre poulet mean? <laughs> <laughs> macabre poulet? That sounds like macabre chicken. Like, oh my god. <laughs> remember when the remember when the guy was trying to convince me that I was fucking who's the guy from Saturday Night Live that's on DuckTales or whatever? Bobby Moynihan. He would not quit trying to tell me I was Bobby Moynihan. I'm like, dude, my name is Mitch. I didn't really look that much like Bobby Moynihan. He's like, no, but you were just in that panel, man. Doing the and I was like, dude, I swear it's not me. And he's like but, like, you guys have the same beard. Like, he was trying to convince me that I was Bobby Moynihan. You look more like Action Bronson than Bobby Moynihan. Bobby Moynihan, what's yeah. the similarity? Good God. He was, try 
It was when Bobby Moynihan had a beard, but it was, as I remember from my memory, I think it was like a big gray beard. It didn't even look like, anyway. It looked nothing like he was, that. He was so convinced. He was so convinced. That's true. <laughs> Scary chicken merch coming. <laughs> Scary chicken merch coming with Maniac tapes. Oh, I drew a grief for it that never got published. <laughs> There's so many griefs that never get used. Uh, with that, we will we will wrap it up. Thank you guys so much for, for tuning in, for hanging out. Uh, thank you to Jason. Thank you to Mitch. And thank you to Freddy Krueger slash Macabre Poulet uh, for hanging out with us. Um, oh, hold on. Pause. What? 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 Zelig270, who I'm guessing is Rob's wife, says, tell the Wiley D. Crane story. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Two things. One, apparently I look like Wally Dufresne, who is a popular chef in New York. To the point that I was vacationing in Italy one time, and a lot of the people in our tour group said, I think that's Wally Dufresne smoking and vomiting over there in the ruins. <laughs> <laughs> so one time, Jenny and I went to New York. We're like, holy shit, let's go eat at Wally Dufresne's restaurant. This would be great. So I go to the restaurant. <laughs> And immediately, everyone who works at the restaurant started losing their shit. And they're like, <laughs> right this way. You know, you kind of look a little bit like chef. <laughs> and I was like, great, great. And as I sat down, everybody at the restaurant eventually served me. They brought people over to look at me because I looked so much like fucking Wally. To the point that eventually, Wally Dufresne came out for the back of the kitchen. And he didn't venture to my table. He just stood there like this. He crossed his arms intentionally in the darkness <laughs> and just stared me down. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> he was so oh, pissed. Motherfucker, you win. I'm going to eat my fucking egg. Fuck off. He seriously did not laugh. He, I think he thought I was clowning him. <laughs> yeah, look. you were trying to, you were trying I, to steal I grew this out shine. intentionally just to clown Wally Dufresne <laughs> at the <laughs> restaurant. I just had to look like a rodeo clown on purpose for three months. Step. Shave the top of your right, head. Yeah. Oh, All right. So, yeah. We are there out of here now. Oh, yeah, let's try this one more time. Thank you guys. Uh, love you all. Please stay safe. Uh, be happy. Be healthy. All the love to to all of our friends in Minneapolis. Mitch, you and your, your friends and family. We're thinking of y'all. Um, thank yeah. yeah. Thank you guys. And we will see you on the next one. Bye, guys. Thanks, guys.